Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today's project is to put these plants into the ground over here on our north side garden. Um, this is mostly a shade garden, although it does get a little bit of sun throughout the day. And um, in order to plant these plants, I'm finding that I want to rearrange some of the things that I already have. So um, nothing's ever easy, right? So I'm gonna be taking on this project and trying to get it done. So come on with me and let's rearrange some stuff over here in the north side garden. This tray of annuals here includes eight simple, plain white impatiens, eight of these purple coleus or more burgundy or I don't know what color you'd call them. I call them purple. And then three of these little Leo leopards bane. Now these, as I understand it, are an ephemeral, which means that they grow in the spring, they do their thing, and then they die off for the rest of the summer. Similar to what bleeding hearts do, or Virginia bluebells, or some of the spring bulbs and things like that. So I'm looking for spaces over here in the north side garden for these plants. And as I'm looking, I'm seeing, well, there are some design choices that I want to change. So let me share with you what I have here, and then we'll talk about what I want to change. Back in this corner, I have three container plants. This is a dwarf Alberta spruce that's in a container. This is a hosta. I don't know what variety it is, but it's a nice solid green one, a nice big bold leafed one. It's in a container. And then I have this, Japanese maple volunteer um, that I'm growing in a pot. My goal is to grow this into a nice sized Japanese maple tree. I think it's a blood good variety, which means it'll be a large tree when it's all said and done. But for now, this is only the second year as a volunteer. It was in my neighbor's garden and it came off of her tree. And last year we put it in this pot and I'd like to continue growing it. So I need to um, take a little bit of care with that. And then here is a Henry's Garnet Sweet Spire, and it's growing really nicely, and it's covered with um, flower bracts on it right now. So that's going to be beautiful here in just a minute with the flowers, and it'll be nice and fragrant as well. In fact, it's grown so much that my little garden stake has gotten lost in it, so let me move that up there. There we go. So I want to kind of rearrange these pots into a different configuration here in the garden. Um, it's a little crowded back in here. This area right here is full of Black Eyed Susan's Goldsturm Rudbeckia. This is a winter gem boxwood and that is a Sun King Aurelia or Spikenard. Um, and then over that way we've got some Spirea, some Epimedium. Here is another Spikenard right here. It doesn't look like it's doing very well. And then some Astilbe and then these are um, Nandina domestica, heavenly bamboo. So I want to rearrange this a little bit and one of the things that I'm thinking about is moving this tree to something that's a little bit more front and center. And speaking of front and center, this planter box is kind of in the center of the garden bed from left to right as you look at this small north side garden area. Um, and I'm going to keep it here, obviously. It's too heavy to move. I'm not going to be moving that. And then we have this center area of plants here that um, is kind of set off. We ha kind of have this area divided into thirds. Over there is a big hosta area. Over here are the plants I just talked about. And then here in the center, I have a mix of heucheras, hellebores and hostas, the three H's. And, um, and also this is an Invincible Minimavet hydrangea that I put in last year. And um, so I kind of want to put the tree container kind of right here in front and center. So let me discuss what the plants are in this area before we go too far. Everything in here is um, new uh, in the last year or two, and everything is really thriving too, so I kind of hate to mess around with a good thing too much. This is a hellebore, that's a hellebore, this is another hellebore here, 
and there's one back there. So four hellebores in here, and as I understand it, hellebores don't really take kindly to moving them once they have matured. So if I want to move them, I think this is the year to do it. I put these in two seasons ago in the fall, and so they grew last season, they didn't flower. They grew this season, and some of them flowered, but not all of them. So um, I'm trying to decide if I want to move the hellebores or if I want to leave them here and move the hostas, which I know can be moved more easily. This is, I believe, a Minuteman hosta. This is, I think, called, um, what is this one called? I don't remember, but I bought it because it has the red coloration on the stems. Looks like some slugs or earwigs have gotten to it. This one I think is called First Blush, and it's solid green, but it has the burgundy on the stems as well. This is a double bloodroot. Um, it's already flowered, and now it's got its leaves out for the season. Um, and this is a beautiful heuchera. I'm not sure which variety of it, but I love this one because the fronts of the leaves are kind of a greenish, burgundy-ish mix of color, but on the back, they're this beautiful, almost iridescent burgundy color. I love that. This is a guacamole hosta, and actually it'll get a lot bigger than this even. So um, it might not be the best location for it because it doesn't really have room to get much bigger. This is a blue Hawaii hosta, and it too wants to get bigger than this. So maybe it needs to move, or at least one of them needs to move. One, two, three margarita hostas. I think they're sized appropriately for this area, so that's okay. Um, this is a carnival watermelon heuchera. There are three of them here. I really love this color. Um, I want to kind of see if I can do something to spread this color around the garden a little bit more evenly. I think having a clump of it is nice, but also evening out the reddishness in this garden might be a good idea. This is a Hosta elegans, and it is definitely in too small of a space here. It's going to get very big if I let it, so I need to f figure that out. This is another guacamole, and this one is also wanting to get pretty big, so um, I don't think it has room to get big there. Down here in front, I don't know the variety of this Hosta, but I love it. It's got the dark green centers with the creamy white edges and between the dark and the cream there's a little bit of kind of a watercolor green shading that I like. It's a little bit um, uh, not a very straight edge so I like that. And then some bulbs here again this foliage needs to die back so that it can bloom again next year. So I don't plan to move any of the bulbs. Um, just take care of them so that they come back next year. So that's what's here, but I'm thinking I want to put the pot with the Japanese maple kind of right here and surround it with the hellebores. And so I definitely need to move this hosta, this bloodroot, and this hosta, and probably that hosta as well. So let me start with that and then see how it looks once I put that pot here. Help me move this. Okay, so the question is, do I like this location? I hope so because it's heavy, but it doesn't have to stay here. Let me stand back and look at it. I'm mainly looking at the pot right now because the tree needs some work before I consider it uh, looking good. But uh, let's see about this pot. Yeah, I think this is where I'm going to keep this pot now. So now I need to take care of the tree that's in it. I need to add some nutrient soil on top. I'm going to add some compost to the top and I need to restake it so that it's more vertical. And then I'm going to look and see if it needs to have any pruning done to it to turn it into a nice tree shape. This is the compost that we bought in a big bulk order a couple mm, months ago now. Um, it's mushroom compost and leaf mold basically.
the stake that's already on this tree only goes down just above the old soil level. So I'm gonna cut off the old stake and put a new one in. See, this was only that long. So I'm gonna put in this bamboo stake. I'm gonna try to get it pretty much perpendicular to the earth all the way down in the soil as far as it'll go. And now I'm going to reattach the trunk of the tree to this stake so that it will grow nice and strong and straight. And then this part will be where the tree begins to form actually a tree. Taking off these lower leaves because I don't want branches that far down on the trunk. All right, now I've got branches starting to grow from here and here and here and here and here and here. So that's good. Um, I know nothing, by the way, about growing trees from volunteers. So I don't know if what I'm about to say is the right thing, the wrong thing. It's just how I'm gonna do it. If you know more about growing a tree from a volunteer, let me know. But what I want is for it to form actually branches in this area. So I think I'm going to trim off this leader about a third of the height of the tree. And what I think that will do is force more sideways growth on the part that's remaining. So I'm gonna do that right here. All right, so what that I hope will do is force more branching out this way. Um, now, I'd really like this trunk to be as straight as it can be. So I'm gonna fuss with the staking a little bit more. All right, so I think, I hope, this will give us a nice tree form as this little volunteer maple grows. I think it'll be fun if we put some of these white impatiens and these purplish burgundy-ish coleus around the base of this tree in this container. Um, I'm debating how many to put in here. I think three of each will be sufficient. What do you think? Now, earlier in the season, when I was fertilizing my entire garden, I already put some plant tone fertilizer into this container so that the tree would have some nutrients to get the season started. Um, I, so I don't need to add a lot of fertilizer to the soil for the tree. I am gonna add a little bit of flower tone for these um, annuals, but not a lot. I'm not gonna go overboard because I don't wanna hurt the tree. So I have my flower tone in a little container here and I'm just gonna use a little bit for each of the plants that I put in here. Just a little bit, about a tablespoon or less. Do I need the purple coleus in there? Would it look nice with it? Sometimes simple is better, you know. I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna, instead of putting three coleus in here, I'm going to just put one in the center by the stake, right here. And then maybe, if we're lucky, this coleus will grow up around this stake and make it look like it's a bit of a topiary around the tree. This is an experiment. I've never done that before. Yeah, hopefully this will grow nice and big and round, maybe even up to here. And uh, it'll look like a uh, ball down here and then a nice fluff up here. And hopefully that'll be a nice look. And then the impatience should each fill in. It should fill this pot by the end of the summer with any luck. Okay, so now 
this tree is set for the season. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and plant my coleus and my impatiens. Well, I need to get some more white impatience because I'd like to scatter them kind of throughout this side of the border and put some on the other side as well. And I just ran out. So yeah, more white impatience. Also, I need to think about how to use this for annuals this year. Also, I kind of want to spread out this pink blob. Maybe take one of those plants and put it over there somewhere and put another one over there somewhere. Uh, but I don't really want to do it while they're blooming, so I'm going to wait to do that until after the heucheras are done blooming, and then I'll transplant some of them. So my rearrangement of this bed isn't going to be completed today, but that's okay. I just need to get my annuals in the ground, but I need to have some forethought so that I know where I'm putting these heucheras um, in the future. So I don't know. It's all kind of random. It's all kind of just, you know, making it up as I go along, just like normal. But I have uh, six more of these coleus that I can put in as purple accents throughout the garden too. So that's going to be nice. All right, so I've got the impatiens in, I've got the coleus in. I still have three of these leopard's banes to put in somewhere and the hostas and bloodroot that I took out have to go back in too. So thinking about where to put all these things. So this leopard's bane is a plant that I've never grown before. I had never really heard of it either, but I was keying off the name of the variety. It's called Little Leo Leopard's Bane or Doronicum Caucasicum. And it blooms in the early to late spring with yellow daisy-like flowers. Uh, let's see, it's hardy in zones four through seven, so we're on the border of it uh, being too hot for it, probably. It grows 12 to 15 inches tall and 12 inches wide. It prefers consistent soil moisture. So I was thinking about putting it over there by those hostas, but that gets to be dry shade in the middle of the summer, so maybe not. But then I am going to be adding drip irrigation over there for the hostas, so maybe that's a good place for them. Um, the description says that the vibrant flowers provide a beautiful complement to spring bulbs, both in the garden and in bouquets. Attractive planted with forget-me-nots and lunaria may go dormant in summer heat. Best planted in small groupings among perennials with spreading leaves. So that means maybe I should put it... Um, I don't know. I think anywhere in this garden would be fine. It's a matter of where do I want to have yellow daisy-like flowers in the spring. So I have three quart sizes of them and I'm going to plant them near each other. Dare I say it, this garden's getting kind of full. I forgot to mention it can take sun or shade and I don't really know much more than that so I'm going to put it over here which gets quite a bit of sun in the winter early springtime and it gets dappled sun in the summer so I think it'll be fine anywhere in here as far as sun goes 
It's just a matter of placement at this point. I think this is going to be my strategy. Right up here against this uh, walkway, I'm going to take out the violets. I'm going to nestle it right between the stones and the Hakanakloa. The Hakanakloa won't be here in the late winter, early spring. It'll, be, have, it'll have died back. And so these will be able to grow and bloom and do their thing. And then the Hakanakloa will come on as these are starting to fade. So that's my plan. Sitting in the dirt in white shorts. Not the smartest move ever. I'm going to get these violets out of here so they don't confuse the issue. I allow violets to grow in my gardens in areas where I don't have things planted because I think they're very pretty. But as I put plants in the garden, the violets are coming out. Okay, so back in here, this is a... Um, Brunera that has volunteered here. I'm going to let it grow on and grow up. This is Hakanakloa. I believe it's the all gold variety or it could be Oriola. I'm not sure. It has sweet woodruff growing amongst it, which I'm fine with. This is where I put one of my new impatience. Here's a little sprig of Hakanakloa that I'm hoping will grow bigger. This is pig squeak or Burginia that I just put in. There's one here, one here, and one right back there. And they were from bare root and so they're struggling but they're coming along. So I've marked them with those white plant markers. And if they survive, they'll each grow to be about 12 inches. And so it'll be a nice little clump of them here. Here's one of the coleus I just put in. Back here is an astilbe that hasn't bloomed yet and um, more sweet woodruff. So I'm hoping the sweet woodruff, which is also back there, will fill in nicely through here. Um, so if I put this leopard's bane right here, it and the pig squeak will co-mingle. That's my hope anyway. Hopefully they'll become best buds. Now back up in this bed further, we've got several inches, probably six or eight inches of compost and mulch that have decomposed over the years. But here, right by the path, is not as deep. So I've already hit clay down in here, but it's what we've got to deal with, so I'm hoping that the leopard's bane will be okay in this compacted clay area. Put some flower tone in. I'm out of biotone at the moment, so flower tone will do a similar job. Open this up a little bit. You can see it's a little bit dry in the bottom, but moist at the top, so I'm gonna have to water these in really well. Go ahead and put the label back in because I don't know this plant very well, so I might need to refer to that more often than normal. Okay, that's one of three in the ground. This stake right here indicates that I've got tulips planted right here. So that'll be nice in the spring when the tulips come up and mingle with this. Should be a nice display, hopefully. I'm gonna try to just get this right between the Hakanakloa and the sidewalk. As I'm looking at it, I think this Bruner right here is gonna be a problem, so I'm gonna go ahead and dig that out. that somewhere else. There, that opens up a little bit to give this leopard's bane a little bit more of a chance. Okay, now I still have three hostas and some bloodroot to put back into the ground. Where should they go? This hosta that has the white and green variegation with the red stems, I think will look nice right here behind this uh, Virginia and behind the uh, uh, impatience kind of right here. There we go. So if this Virginia grows this season, I'll rearrange again. But if it doesn't, then it's all gonna be fine. You see how I'm not fastidious at all about eventual plant sizes. This blood root is special for a couple of reasons. One, 
it's a double flowering blood root, which is pretty rare. And two, it came as a pass along plant from my daughter-in-law's mom, Judy. So I wanna make sure I take good care of it. I'd love to see it bloom again next year and I hope that it will spread over time. And I think I'm gonna put this Patriot Hosta right here to kind of balance that green and white hosta over there. Oh, I hit some roots. So that's not gonna be a great spot. All right, looking for a different spot now. How about right here? Move this violet out. And stick in this hosta here. Oh yeah, that's a lot better space. Soil's just really nice right here. Okay, and this first blush hosta looks like it's already spread into two clumps. I'm gonna put it back here. Right near this goat's beard and this coleus. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at everything we've planted in the north side garden today. Starting off on this side, all of this is the same, but down in here, got one of the purple coleus that will bring a nice pop of purple over into this corner. Uh, beside it I put in this hosta. I did find the tag for it. That's called Raspberry Sunday Hosta. This one that's got the uh, green and white with the burgundy stems. I also put in three leopard's bane all across the front here and moved that volunteer brunera back there. And I put in one of the white impatiens right here. So the impatiens and the coleus will fill in and provide a little bit of annual interest back in here. And this little kind of hosta corner that I've got going on now has another interesting variety added into the mix. Moving down around this way, back in that little empty corner by the nandina and the ferns and the goat's beard, I added in the um, first blush hosta, which is a plain green with uh, red coloration on the stems and a little bit up onto the leaves. Did I show that very closely? I don't think I did. So you can see the red comes up the stem and just a little bit of tinge of red around the edges of the leaf. You have to, kind of have to squint your eyes and you'll see it. See right here on the tip, there's a little bit of red. So a little bit of red uh, foliage coloration and then one of the purple coleus there again. So that purple and the burgundy foliage on the hosta will pick up on each other back there and also there's some red on the nandina and then there's the berry smoothie heucheras up in the window box or sorry the planter box that will all kind of blend in nicely and also of course the carnival watermelon heucheras right here. All of that reddish purplish color tones will mix together nicely there. Of course, the Japanese maple that I pulled into a new position and I pruned it up a little bit, straightened up the stem and underplanted with one of the purple coleus and three of the white impatiens. And then down in front, I put two more of the white impatiens and one of the purple coleus. So that kind of mirrors what's happening in the pot. And I like those right beside this purple heuchera here. I'm happy with the spacing of the pot compared to the hellebores that are behind it. The hellebores kind of ring behind it a little bit. This guacamole hosta is probably good in a, good in a stay there. I'm probably going to be rearranging two of these three heucheras, move two of them out, leave one there, probably leave the middle one and move the two outside ones. Uh, put one of the outside ones over in there somewhere and then take the other one of these and put it over in here somewhere, just to spread the red colors around a little bit. I do already love, though, this Japanese maple color um, in the front with the heucheras in the background. I already am in love with that, so that was a nice change. Down over here is where I put the double bloodroot, double flowering bloodroot, and then over here is where I put the Patriot Hosta, Here's one of the coleus there and another one back there. And I rearranged this pot and pulled it out. And then, oh, I forgot to mention over there, I put the dwarf Alberta spruce pot over there to give a little bit more height and a different shape and a different texture over into this hosta border. 
over here. So I think that works out nicely too. And I'm not sure if you saw it on camera, but I put one of the coleus here near the water bubbler and one down here on this other side by the Japanese painted fern. So those colors will blend nicely as well as this coleus gets growing a little bit more. We'll pick up on the purple in these leaves. Still to come in this flower bed, I'm going to be taking out these black eyed Susans and move them to another location in the yard. And I'm probably gonna be taking out these two spirea shrubs and moving them as well. Um, I don't know yet what I'm going to be putting in the place over here, but um, if you have ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I might put some more epimedium in here. I, so far, I only have one plant of it, and I really love the flowers on it. It was a nice surprise this year. So I might put more of the pink champagne epimedium down in here, um, but I don't know what else. So if you have thoughts, let me know. So that brings me to the end of today's project. Thank you so much for joining me today. Are you rearranging things in your garden? You know, as things come up that you planted last year and now they're bigger and closer together, um, sometimes you just have to rearrange. And to me, that is the fun part of gardening. It's, it's what gardening is all about for me. Okay, so there's a lot of fun parts of gardening. And it's, there's a lot of things that gardening is all about, but rearranging things and making a creative display of your plants, that is a super fun part of gardening. I hope you're enjoying yourself in your garden today. I hope you have beautiful weather and beautiful plants. And I hope I will see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.